Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello and welcome to Hello Self Podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Leonard, and the mission of this podcast is to help you get those dreams and goals off your someday shelf and put a plan together that turns your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. I don't know, some of you may be saying to yourself, I want to do something different, but I don't know what it is. I'm not happy where I am, or what is my purpose? What is my passion? How do I venture out on something when I don't even know how to do it, but I want to go, I want to learn, where can I learn? Well, that's exactly what Hello Self Podcast is about. We will be offering interviews with seasoned professionals, coaches, and maybe even some fun stuff that helps you get clear about what it is you might like to do. Because after all, life is a discovery. So these are people or these are opportunities through Hello Self Podcast that you can learn to know a little bit more about who you are. The intent of the podcast is help you to gain clarity and to make sure that you're stepping out and exploring and feeling okay about that. The coaches will share their celebrations and we all have disappointments at time, but they'll share some of those times that maybe things didn't go just as planned. But I'm telling you, I have an interview today that you're going to really enjoy. And it is from Dan Aronoff. He is the owner of FranNet. It's a franchise business. And I want him to share more about it. It's funny that before before I get, turn it over to Dan, I want to say something. I've known Dan for years in from a business standpoint and from a friend standpoint and associate. But when I was reading his bio, I learned some things about him that I didn't know. He went to Indiana University for his undergraduate work. <laughs> and oh, I'm yes. from, <laughs> that's great. And I'm from Columbus, Indiana, which is about 40 miles from Indiana University. But I had no idea. Another thing that I learned, not about Dan, but about the business he's in, approximately 10%, maybe a little bit more, percent of businesses are franchise businesses in the USA. And that was uh, research, some research done in January of 2022. So one thing that I always believe in when we hear other people's stories, we learn. And so even in reading his biography or his bio about his transitions in life, I learned a lot about him and I've known him for years. I always say that I believe in every story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So we're going to go in that direction now and I'm gonna let Dan take over and just tell you a little bit of his story, whatever he wants to share about himself, his career, and a lot about FranNet because I think this is an opportunity in the days that we're in right now, especially the transition in our society and people looking for more independence and maybe business ownership. So Dan, take it from here. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much, Patricia. And it gives me a warm feeling having this conversation with you and obviously an opportunity to share with others. I mean, think about it. It's been 17 years that I've been in the friend at business. And you and I met about six months in my journey. So hard to believe that we've known each other that long and have really become great friends. So thanks so much for having me. You know, a little bit about my background. So I grew up in Cincinnati, as Patricia mentioned, went to Indiana University, got my psychology, de psychology degree, and then 
carried on and got my master's in labor and industrial relations from the University of Illinois. Yes. And started my corporate career in human resources. Worked for Exxon in Baton Rouge a couple times, Houston, Chicago. Worked for Kraft Foods in Chicago. Worked yeah. for a biotech company called Kendall International, also in Chicago. And actually, the, the, the last assignment, that was a defining moment in my career. I experienced an abrupt layoff. And, you know, working in HR, unfortunately, you know, you, you have to oftentimes participate in downsizing programs. So I, I had a spearhead, several of those in my corporate career, but you never really know what it's like until you experience it yourself. Not to say that I wasn't, you know, compassionate, but again, until you experience it yourself, it's a totally different story. It was a defining moment in my career. It planted that seed for me that I really need to take control. I need to design my own career. And that's eventually what led me to striking out on my own and becoming a business owner and franchisee with FranNet. So that real hello self moment was when you were downsized. I think yeah. it's interesting that you're saying that because we have parallel backgrounds and I didn't know that. I was working in corporate America and I law was going to be downsized because they were having a downsizing. They sent me to coaching workshops so I could learn how to do a job search. And while I was there, I learned, but I got a little afraid. I learned of how because I'd never been in transition before. But it's interesting when I came back to the company, they said, we would like for you to lead this <laughs> downsizing process. So here I went through all the emotions of losing my job. And yeah. then I was helping other people transition. We just never know in life, Dan, what to That's expect. Right. Mm -hmm. Not right. even in our businesses or our careers. No, I mean, you know, I think on life, you got to experience, obviously, you know, the ups are always good, but you got to experience the downs too. You know, it was a somewhat of a low point, you know, because obviously the stressors of, you know, either finding another job or doing something on your own, whatever it may be, you know, going through that process of, Figuring it out is yes. not easy, you know, and we're talking big life decisions, but, you know, I always had a desire to do my own thing, you know, and the, the, the timing was right. And fortunately, I had the financial resources to be able to weather the storm and ramp up period. But, right. you, you know, people oftentimes say, well, you know, if you had to do it over again, would you? And I'm like, absolutely not. I mean, you know, the, the experiences that I got at Exxon and Kraft Foods and Kendall were invaluable. I had awesome mentors. I mean, they were all great organizations. And, you know, it 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 really kind of defined who I am, you know, from a yeah. value standpoint. And, you know, so I'm kind of a big believer of, you know, things happen for a reason. But so I was I. ready. I was ready to 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 do my own thing. And you know, I think you mentioned something that is very important to our listeners, well, to you and I, but to our listeners, is that every opportunity, every career opportunity, whatever we've done, regardless of how it ended up, has built the foundation for the next step in our life's journey. And just like you said, you believe that things happen the way they're supposed to happen. And you just define that all of those businesses that you were part of, and there, there were very diverse roles in a lot of them, sure. weren't they? Sure, D t completely different industries and different, well, Kraft and Exxon were, were Goliaths, but Kendall was a young startup. So different cultures, different experiences for sure. And look how that's prepared you to now coach people <laughs> in their yeah. franchising because a lot of them have never owned a business before. They may have worked in a corporation 
and didn't know anything but that. And now you've got the human resources, you know how to recruit. So you've got all that background. And I think that is a significant thing for our interviewers or our listeners is to understand that whatever journey they've been on to start looking at what do I have now? What do I have that helps me with my next phase? And what would you say are some key factors? And and I want to talk more about this franchise business too. But what would you say are some key factors to consider before starting a business of any kind and specifically a franchise business? Yeah. Well, you know, you got to start with yourself. You got to know yourself. Mm. You got to know yourself. You got to know what you bring to the table, your skill sets, and and also what you're willing to learn. I mean, you know, you don't have to have every skill set or expertise. It's, it's what do you bring to the table? What are you willing to learn? You got to know what you want. And I know that Ah. sounds kind of obvious, but you know, I tell anybody that's contemplating business ownership, you got to really want it. What's the why? What's going on in your life that says, you know, business ownership might give me the things in life that maybe a corporate job can't. I mean, I talk to a lot of people and they all have very different personal reasons. You know, for some, it could be, you know, they just, they want control. Uh, They need to have that, that independence, that ability to make their own, you know, key decisions. For others, it could be a situation where they've been road warriors and have traveled all the time and it's really impacted their work-life balance, their ability to spend time with the family. And they want to be able to park themselves, park themselves in one city, be able to have dinner with the family. You know, others may want to diversify their income stream. So maybe- Keep your full-time job, but create another stream of income. You know, so you got to know your why. You got to know what's prompting you, what's motivating you to want to do this. You know, it's it's not for everybody. It's not 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 everybody's cup of. But for a lot of people, it can be a great way to make a living. Mm-hmm. You know, you said something that about the why, and that's what Simon Sinek talks about in his book. Is that when you have doubts, go back. Or when you have disappointments, go back. Why did I start this in the first place? Why did I think that I wanted my own? Why did I think that I wanted this? So you're right. What is it you want? And why do you want it? Because I think those are key factors in success and happiness. Some people have told me that they want to start a franchise business for their children. That, that yeah. they have, yes, that they legacy. could. Legacy, um, a legacy strategy is definitely something that we're seeing more of. I mean, I yes. think there are parents that worry about their children being able to enjoy a level of stability in the corporate world. Yes. And, you know, if that's compromised, well, then maybe you need to create your own job security. And that could be through business ownership. Yes. It could also be a way for a parent to stay active in a, in retirement, you know, have purpose, be engaged and have the opportunity to mentor their children. I mean, yes. you know, how how exciting could that be? You know, so you're exactly right. Legacy strategies are becoming much more commonplace. And I I I just have to mention something Dan's son has a business of his own. So he is a mentor. He is a coach. He is a supporter. He's doing these kind of things. And it doesn't mean that his son will stay in that same kind of business. It doesn't matter. But what he's getting is experience in business ownership. And then he'll know. And I think that's where it starts sometimes. And a lot of people are operating right out of their home, aren't they, Dan, now? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it's like anything in life. You know, obviously, you hope that your children can learn from you, but probably even in more cases, I'm learning from him. Yes. Uh, how he leverages technology and has this quiet confidence about himself going out and doing the research and um, not having any 
inhibitions, but doing it in a smart way. It's been neat to see. And I think that that it creates almost a partnership between a, a, a child and their parents. And I like that a lot, even though it may be different businesses. But I think, and you mentioned another thing that I really, really like, and that is the generations coming together. Like mm -hmm. you're of a different generation than your son is, but learning, you said, I learned from him and mm -hmm. he learns from you. So it's that blending of the two societies that can really enhance where we're going in the next five years in our business world. Yeah. You, you see that too? Oh, exactly. Very yeah. much so. And I see in corporate America, a lot of things are opening up for mentoring now. So I think that it is finally being seen as something that's very critical, especially in a world that changes overnight. It Years ago, yeah. we'd go 10 years and we didn't change much. But now yeah. you come in tomorrow and, oh, we're not doing that now. We're doing this. So it's a transition. Do you think that the pandemic had any effects on people desiring to be more independent or maybe start their own business? Do you think that had any impact? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> excuse me. I think, um, you know, certainly a lot of people were doing work remotely and, and love that lifestyle aspect. And now we're hearing a lot of corporations are requiring you to come back to the workplace. And, and some people, you know, they don't want to do that. Right. Maybe in some cases, just from the ability of whether they have childcare yes. or whatever, it, it may not, it may not really be conducive to that, that situation. So I think people are beginning to think about, you know, how can I make a living and have more control over those aspects. And certainly business ownership can be a way to do that. I mean, obviously there's a lot more to consider when you're thinking about going into business for yourself. I mean, you know, it's no cakewalk either. But, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say I've seen because of the pandemic any more uptick or interest in business ownership than I, I've had before. A lot of people ask me, you know, is there a good time? Is there a bad time yes. to start a business? And I don't want to be blase about it, but I don't think there's ever a bad time. You know, if you really have the desire to do something on your own, then it's a good time. Yes. It doesn't matter whether the economy, I mean, there've been plenty of entrepreneurs that have thrived when the economy was, you know, in the ditches. It wasn't, yes. wasn't doing yes. well. There's plenty of opportunity regardless of where the economy is. I mean, the pandemic obviously was a little bit different, but if you want to do something on your own, don't let those things hold back. I mean, do your due diligence for sure. Yes. I mean, that's what we're all about. That friend that is helping you do your due diligence, but I don't think there's ever a bad time to strike out on your own. And you know what's wrong with starting something and then deciding three years down the road, this is not it. You would never know unless you decided, like you said, to say, to push forward and learn because there are no such things. I believe this. There are no such things as mistakes. There are, and I don't even know who said that, but somebody said that they're only discoveries. Mm -hmm. And as we discover, we learn. We build a foundation of awareness and knowing, and then it helps us make better decisions. Okay, I want to talk a little bit more specifically about the franchise business and how you work with somebody that might be interested. What are some things that, like, if we were to say, the first thing I usually do is this, because mm -hmm. you know what? When I was researching before I brought, you know, ask you to help me out, I looked at, I cannot believe the different types of franchise businesses. I mm -hmm. even go to one for my workout routine. <laughs> it's all over the place. And then I call these people to help me out with my home projects. And they're part of a franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many, I just did some research and said there's 753,770 franchises in the United States. Yeah, oh. I believe those are franchisees. 
Oh, franchisee. That is yeah. correct. You're so right. So 700 X, 750,000, whatever plus. That is the franchise. Franch yeah. That's uh, right. Nations, territories. Do you know how many franchises there are? I know they're There's opening. There's probably, I don't know, 3,500, 4,000 franchises in the United States. Yeah. So yeah. there are a lot of people, and this was a, a, a record from January 2022, and Dan's yeah. right, it was 700, uh -huh. yeah, almost right, 800,000. Right, right. yeah. But yeah. that is yeah. a lot of people choosing to start their own business through mm -hmm. a franchise. What is the advantage of starting your business through a franchise? Well, I mean, I think, you know, certainly when you're buying into a franchise, you're buying a system. And hopefully a proven system. Now, not yes. all franchises are yes. equal, but you know the idea is that it's a proven system. That there's infrastructure. That you know you're when you buy this franchise. Obviously, there's a brand. Mm -hmm. You're going to know how. They're going to teach you how to market. They're going to provide initial training. They're going to provide ongoing support. They're going to provide technology. They're going to teach you how to find customers. I mean, it's basically a business in a box. It's a blueprint. And, you know, the, the nice thing is, is that you don't have to start from scratch. In most cases, it should help accelerate your ROI, you know, reduce the amount of ramp up and also reduce risk. Yes. So there are a lot of benefits. And, and, you know, I would probably say, at least for me, being a part of a franchise system now for 17 years, the thing that I enjoy the most is the community. The other franchisees that ah. are dear friends to me, they are wonderful sources of, you know, sharing best practices, knowledge, you know, being able to commiserate, you know, yes. learn from them that, you know, if you were doing something on your own, where would you be able to go for that information? It's tougher. So I've got 50 other FranNet franchisees that I can turn to yes. for a variety of stuff. You know, so we, in franchising, we oftentimes say you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Oh, it's I like that. A little cheeky, but I mean, the reality is it's true. That's exactly right. You know, so that, that's the thing that I've enjoyed the most. And, you know, I've been a career coach all my life. And one of the things that I've always said is surround yourself with a community that is going forward in whatever area you're wanting to learn in. So it's like a support a tribe. Daniel Pink calls it a tribe. You know, it's finding yeah. your tribe of people that can help you and support you. And I really like that a lot because I truly believe in community. One other thing that Dan, I wanted to ask you is what, how do they, how does somebody that's interested in a franchise, how do they start learning from you or learning about themselves? What are some things you do? Sure. To help? Well, so when we're working with clients, it's a pretty methodical process. I mean, obviously I'll have a meet and greet. I want to hear their story. I want to hear what's prompted them to think about yeah. maybe doing, doing something on their own. The starting point for us is we've got a proprietary assessment tool oh, and this good. assessment gives me a profile and it plays a part in us having an initial conversation, at which point we'll have a consultation and the goal for me is to get a firm grasp of what they're trying to achieve personally, professionally, and financially. And through this consultation, you know, it's really just learning from them and me peppering them with a lot of questions. And it and gives now, them a, an understanding of what the assessment of whatever they need to have. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, the assessment, it's a pretty powerful tool, but it really doesn't come together until I'm asking a lot of these um, detailed questions. And usually I'm able to identify three, maybe four franchise concepts that could fit their profile, that could fit the goals that they have articulated to me yes. during the consultation. And then assuming they have interest in learning more, I will connect them with the franchisor and then the process begins. They will go through a, a very well orchestrated due diligence process. And my role is to guide them through that process, to be a sounding board, 
to facilitate. So if they need a lender, if they need a yes. franchise attorney, whatever it may be, to connect them with other professional resources so they can make the best decision for them and their family. And the, the nice thing about it is it's a free service to the individual. I know free, you know, how could it be free? No, no, but <laughs> well, I... It's th think of me in a lot of respects. It's it's just like an executive recruiter. I get compensated by the franchisor when I make a placement. So no different than a um, executive recruiter or say a, a realtor. There aren't any hidden fees. There aren't any hidden agendas. By working with me, it does not inflate the franchise fee. It's actually against the law for the franchisor to manipulate the franchise fee. So there's this is you one know, of the safest ways to start a business, isn't it? Well, I mean, I, I, I think your word safe is a, is a good way to put it. We, we look at it from the standpoint of we want to provide an informative, educational, and safe way for you to vet business ownership. You know, if it's not your cup of tea, no worries. I mean, we'll look at it from the standpoint of I, I hope you found it a productive exercise and you know if you've come to the conclusion that business ownership or maybe just franchising isn't a viable path well then you can check that box and focus on other things you know sometimes this can exhilarate somebody's corporate career they might have been maybe not so excited about their corporate job but you know as you kind of go through this process it really helps you kind of find out where your passions are and what right. you're best suited for. And you may come to the conclusion the corporate world is really a better fit. You know, so I, yeah, I would tell anybody, ultimately, my why is to help clarify your career aspirations, uh -huh. Uh -huh. whether it's business ownership, franchising, or staying right where you are. If I've provided that clarity, then for me, that's a victory and hopefully a victory for the individual as well. Fabulous. You know, I, I think I like what you're saying because we get in a spin zone in our own thinking. And once we step outside that spin zone and do the assessment, it, it becomes a wake up moment. It is a hello self moment. This mm -hmm. is for me or it isn't for me. But they gain a lot of knowledge that at least, like you said, it's been checked off that that's not for me. I, I'll have to say to all of you listeners that I had a client that had been in business for 30 years. He said, I'm ready. And it was a successful business, but he said, I'm ready for something else. And just out of the clear blue sky, I said, have you ever thought about franchise? Dan knows about this because he helped. But I just said, have you ever thought about franchise? And he said, no, not really. But I said, well, if you ever decide that that might be a direction, why don't you check out FranNet, my friend Dan Aronoff, and I gave him the information. I did not follow up anymore to see what, well, I mean, I followed up to see how his career was going, yeah. but I never asked him about the franchise because I didn't want to be pushy. I wanted him to discover. And lo and behold, one day I got a call from Dan and he said, your guy just bought a franchise and I can tell you, I can tell you listeners and tell Dan, he is having the ball of his life and he's finding, and I, I'm not going to talk about what the business is unless Dan wants to, but the whole thing is we just never know until we step in because it was not what he was thinking about at all. And he just decided okay, what the heck, I'm not going any place here, because he had been in this spin zone for quite some time, just talking to himself over and over, do I want this, what do I want, I don't know what my passion is, and that's where we can all get, so once you step outside of that zone, and just start exploring, and franchising is one great place, because like Dan said, you're getting free coaching, you're getting an assessment, and a better understanding of what a franchise really is and all the support yeah. functions that go with it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off of a comment that you made earlier in our discussion. And you didn't realize the breadth of franchising. You know, we oh, oftentimes no. say there's more to franchising than French fries. People <laughs> don't realize that they're franchising practically every category from 
technology to education to health and wellness to home improvement. I mean, obviously food and automotive, but there are a lot of choices. A lot dance, of dance, music. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's it's a, it's an and it it's an exciting time and I love what you are doing. What is there anything else? Any advice you? I think you've already done most of that, but anything else that you want to say to our audience that could help them? Now I want to get your information sure, on sure. how could they reach you if they mm -hmm. had some questions, and then anything else you want to say to them, but. Yeah. What would, how could they reach you? Sure. You know, I think just from an overall advice, you know, if, if you've thought about business ownership, you know, I would say, yeah, owe it to yourself to look. Yes. Probably, you know, in most cases, an individual's worst enemy is their perceptions. Uh, in other words, I think there are a lot of people that, oh, well, it's too risky or you need to be a multimillionaire to get in a business or, you know, those things, you know, my, I'll be consumed. I won't have any time and yes. so on and so forth. You know, I, I, I think those are, are pretty significant misconceptions. And what I would tell anybody is if you have a real desire to look at doing something on your own, then you owe it to yourself to look. Good point. Do the, do the due diligence if it confirms maybe some of your concerns, okay, well then maybe that particular business is not right for you or business ownership isn't right. But, you know, until you actually take the time to explore, you're never going to know. You'll, you'll never know. So yeah. kind of take, take that leap and, and learn. And, you know, as far as my contact information, you want the website or my email or both. <laughs> however you want to, whatever you want to give them, however you'd like for them yeah. to reach you well, both, I think. Well, my email address is D-A-R-O-N-O-F-F, -F, last two letters are F like in Frank, at Frannet, F-R-A-N-N-E-T dot com. So D Aronoff at Frannet dot com. My telephone number is 615-202-0225. And of course, if you want to visit our website, it's www.frannet dot com. And of course, when, when we post this podcast, I will put this information out there again as far as the announcement, because some of you may not have been able to get it written down, but we'll have that information on there. And Dan said something earlier that I really like. It takes a community. And this is just one way of helping. It's through a podcast. It's helping you connect to a community, whether it's franchise or what it is is that it takes people to help us get started in a lot of cases, if nothing more than encouragement. And so our listeners have become more because of you, Dan, today. Thank you so much. And thanks to all of my podcast listeners. I hope that this has sparked a little inspiration inside of you to step out of the comfort zone or the uncomfortable zone that you may be in and just look out there at what is available because with Dan's coaching and my willingness to coach, we can help you find something and living life with regrets is not what we want to say at the end. So let's just step out and try it all. And again, I just want to say that I am Patricia Leonard, the host of Hello Self Podcast. And if you have any questions, inquiries, or you would like to be interviewed, just contact me at 615-406-9644 or Patricia at PatriciaLeonard.net and my website is www.patricialeonard.net. Thank you and have a fabulous day. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.